Mazda. That Mazda rotary power. So four are closing up on Putsch as they get into the twisty section of this uh, racetrack. Through turns five and six and down the back stretch once again it looks like Casey Putsch in the number 40 is able to put a bit of distance between himself and the 84 of Steve Forer. These are nine lap races. Your front group is now working lap number three. So we were a third of the way through. And coming up groups eight and 12A. Groups eight and 12A to pre-grid please. And Forer gets by the number 40 of Casey Putsch. Putsch back to third place. Forer now in second in class, in group. And these are the GTP3 cars. Casey's not going to let it go, though. I'm sure he'll close up when he can and, if possible, make the pass. It'll be difficult, though, because it looks like the entry of four that Ralt RT41 is uh, a bit better handling in the twisty section of the, cat, of the uh, racetrack. And, indeed, four are able to pull out a bit from the third-place car of Casey Putsch. Just in the shot there, you see the Gebhardt. That is the uh, Gebhardt JC853, 1984, the year for that. As Forer now navigates around. Turn seven and eight into nine, and uh, Forer trying to get underneath them, hasn't been able to get the job done yet. Car number 10, Robert Stout. And we've got a spin. One of the group nine cars going around, making a 180 there. That looks like the number three of Brett Johnston in the Formula Mazda. Trying to find an opportunity to spin that car around, get moving the right direction. He does. Car number 10, Robert Stout. And he is closing up behind the number 27. 27, the uh, drive of John Boxhorn. Boxhorn in a Lola T163. Your overall leader, the car number 07, Josik Muka. And we've got the uh, Group 9 cars just slotted in behind the number 27 of Boxhorn and now navigating around him as they go through turns eight and nine. Turn 11 and now into turn 12. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course going through some uh, reconfiguring a few years ago and it has made the racetrack a lot more fluid, a lot more rhythmic and uh, much more fun for the drivers. And it's also made the competition a lot closer. Twenty seven. John Boxhorn down the front straight and headed towards turn one. There's the Gebhardt, the number 74, as Robert Stout looking for a way around. Does he find it? Yes, he does. 
And right there behind him, I believe that's the 85 of Hamilton that got balked a bit by the Gebhardt, enabling Stout to distance himself a bit. But eventually the pass was made, and uh, now that field closing up a little bit. These camera shots really give you a nice view of the fluid nature of this track. There's your overall leader. That's the 07 of Josik Muka in a 2006 Swift JMS 016. And Josik really showing the way around here as he has a uh, sizable lead over second place. Once again, this is a race for groups 9 and 11. Groups 8 and 12A are up next. Groups 8 and 12A to pre-grid, please. I want to thank our folks at uh, Indy West, Harley Davidson, for coming out here to Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Harley Davidson with a big presence in the paddock. They brought those familiar black and orange semis to the racetrack, and if you're looking for the thrill of cutting loose with some real friends, that's something that never gets old. You know that. Stop by the Harley Davidson demo truck or Indy West Harley Davidson in the Formula Garage number 29. And we'll show you how easy it is to put that feeling back in your life. Harley motorcycles cost less than you think. They've got eight Harleys here starting under $12,000. And also the Harley-Davidson Riding Academy makes learning to ride easy. Live your legend, Harley-Davidson. Not only are we celebrating four-wheeled vintage racing, but also vintage motorcycles. Vintage motorcycles coming out on course at about 11.30 this morning. Groups 8 and 12A to pre-grid. Your race is next, and that'll be followed by the second practice session for the Trans Am cars. The TA2 class will be coming out. As we see the number 10 of Robert Stout. Your overall leader, Jasek Muka, coming up to the start stand to get that last lap board. One lap to go. As Muka comes down the front straight, all alone, makes that uh, hard right-hand turn into the infield through turns one and two. Comes up on the Gebhardt, car number 73. Through turn three, passing on the outside, gets set up for the fourth corner. Turn five and six onto the front, onto the back stretch. Josik Muka making it look easy. As he is on his final lap, a wire to wire run for the GTP3. Leader, the 2006 Swift JMS 016. Utilizing a short section of the, the oval track there before coming into turns 12, 11, and 12 through 13 to 14. And turn 14, leading back onto the main stretch and the checkered flag. Checkered flag waves for your overall winner and winner of the GTP class here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, SVRA, the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association.
and the Brickyard Vintage Racing Invitational. Camera focused on the number 10 of Robert Stout. Stout's race is run. Same for the 85 of Bruce Hamilton. Race groups 8 and 12A are next. Groups 8 and 12A. Jossic Muka is still on that cool down lap. This is the thrill of victory part of the program. And navigating down the pit road towards Victory Circle. The Indy Legends Charity Pro-Am coming up at approximately 1 o'clock this afternoon. It'll be preceded by the Pro-Am Fan Walk, a chance for those of you here in attendance to get right down up close and personal with the drivers and the cars that'll be part of the field. 34 cars taking part in the 50-minute race. There'll be one mandatory pit stop that'll be a changing of drivers as we have the amateur drivers each paired up with a indy 500 starter from years past and also one brickyard 400 winner and that will be bill elliott so that's coming up at one o'clock and again the fan walk at 12 noon other drivers involved in the Pro-Am include Lynn St. James driving with Debbie Cloud in the number 622 Shelby GT350, Dennis Firestone in the number 76 with Scott Brady, Dick Simon in car number 64 sharing the driving duties with James.